A cyborg, short for cybernetic organism, is a being with both organic and biomechatronic body parts. The term was coined in 1960 by Manfred Kleins and Nathan S. Klein. The term cyborg is not the same thing as bionic, bio robot, or android. It applies to an organism that has restored function or enhanced abilities due to the integration of some artificial component or technology that relies on some sort of feedback. While cyborgs are commonly thought of as mammals, including humans, they might also conceivably be any kind of organism. D.S. Halasi's Cyborg, Evolution of the Superman in 1965 featured an introduction which spoke of a new frontier that was not merely space, but more profoundly the relationship between inner space to outer space a bridge between mind and matter. In popular culture, some cyborgs may be represented as visibly mechanical e.g., Cyborg from DC Comics, the Cybermen in the Doctor Who franchise or the Borg from Star Trek or Darth Vader from Star Wars or as almost indistinguishable from humans e.g., the human Cylons from the reimagining of Battlestar Galactica, etc. Cyborgs in fiction often play up a human contempt for over-dependence on technology, particularly when used for war, and when used in ways that seem to threaten free will. Cyborgs are also often portrayed with physical or mental abilities far exceeding a human counterpart military forms may have in-built weapons, among other things, such as Robocop. Topic. Overview. According to some definitions of the term, the physical attachments humanity has with even the most basic technologies have already made them cyborgs. In a typical example, a human with an artificial cardiac pacemaker or implantable cardioverter defibrillator would be considered a cyborg, since these devices measure voltage potentials in the body, perform signal processing, and can deliver electrical stimuli, using this synthetic feedback mechanism to keep that person alive. Implants, especially cochlear implants, that combine mechanical modification with any kind of feedback response are also cyborg enhancements. Some theorists cite such modifications as contact lenses, hearing aids, or intraocular lenses as examples of fitting humans with technology to enhance their biological capabilities. As cyborgs currently are on the rise some theorists argue there is a need to develop new definitions of aging and for instance a biotechnosocial definition of aging has been suggested the term is also used to address human technology mixtures in the abstract this includes not only commonly used pieces of technology such as phones, computers, the internet, etc. but also artifacts that may not popularly be considered technology for example pen and paper and speech and language when augmented with these technologies and connected in communication with people in other times and places, a person becomes capable of much more than they were before. An example is a computer, which gains power by using Internet protocols to connect with other computers. Another example, which is becoming more and more relevant is a bot-assisted human or human-assisted bot, used to target social media with likes and shares. Cybernetic technologies include highways, pipes, electrical wiring, buildings, electrical plants, libraries, and other infrastructure that we hardly notice, but which are critical parts of the cybernetics that we work within. Bruce Sterling in his Universe of Shaper, Mechanist suggested an idea of alternative cyborg called lobster, which is made not by using internal implants, but by using an external shell e.g. a powered exoskeleton. Unlike human cyborgs that appear human externally while being synthetic internally e.g. the bishop type in the Alien franchise, Lobster looks inhuman externally but contains a human internally e.g. Elysium, Robocop. The computer game Deus Ex, Invisible War prominently featured cyborgs called Omar, where Omar is a Russian translation of the word Lobster, since the Omar are of Russian origin in the game. Topic. Origins The concept of a man-machine mixture was widespread in science fiction before World War II. As early as 1843, Edgar Allan Poe described a man with extensive prostheses in the short story, The Man That Was Used Up. 
In 1911, Jean de la Haye introduced the Nyctalope, a science fiction hero who was perhaps the first literary cyborg, in Le Mystère des 15, later translated as the Nyctalope on Mars. Edmund Hamilton presented space explorers with a mixture of organic and machine parts in his novel The Comet Doom in 1928. He later featured the talking, living brain of an old scientist, Simon Wright, floating around in a transparent case, in all the adventures of his famous hero, Captain Future. He uses the term explicitly in the 1962 short story, After a Judgment Day, to describe the mechanical analogues, called Charlie's, explaining that, see, e they had been called from the first one in the 1960s. Cybernetic organisms. In the short story, No Woman Born, in 1944, C. L. Moore wrote of Deirdre, a dancer, whose body was burned completely and whose brain was placed in a faceless but beautiful and supple mechanical body. The term was coined by Manfred E. Kleins and Nathan S. Klein in 1960 to refer to their conception of an enhanced human being who could survive in extraterrestrial environments. Their concept was the outcome of thinking about the need for an intimate relationship between human and machine as the new frontier of space exploration was beginning to open up. A designer of physiological instrumentation and electronic data processing systems, Kleins was the chief research scientist in the Dynamic Simulation Laboratory at Rockland State Hospital in New York. The term first appears in print five months earlier when the New York Times reported on the psychophysiological aspects of space flight symposium where Kleins and Klein first presented their paper. A book titled Cyborg, Digital Destiny and Human Possibility in the Age of the Wearable Computer was published by Doubleday in 2001. Some of the ideas in the book were incorporated into the 35mm motion picture film Cyberman. Cyborg tissues in engineering Cyborg tissues structured with carbon nanotubes and plant or fungal cells have been used in artificial tissue engineering to produce new materials for mechanical and electrical uses. The work was presented by Di Giacomo and Maresca at Mrs. 2013 Spring Conference on April, 3rd, talk number SS 4.04. The cyborg obtained is inexpensive, light and has unique mechanical properties. It can also be shaped in desired forms. Cells combined with MWCNTs co-precipitated as a specific aggregate of cells and nanotubes that formed a viscous material. Likewise, dried cells still acted as a stable matrix for the MWCNT network. When observed by optical microscopy the material resembled an artificial tissue composed of highly packed cells. The effect of cell drying is manifested by their ghost cell appearance. A rather specific physical interaction between MWCNTs and cells was observed by electron microscopy suggesting that the cell wall, the most outer part of fungal and plant cells, may play a major active role in establishing a CNT's network and its stabilization. This novel material can be used in a wide range of electronic applications from heating to sensing and has the potential to open important new avenues to be exploited in electromagnetic shielding for radio frequency electronics and aerospace technology. In particular using Candida albicans cells cyborg tissue materials with temperature sensing properties have been reported. Topic. Actual cyborgization attempts In current prosthetic applications, the sea leg system developed by Otto Bock Healthcare is used to replace a human leg that has been amputated because of injury or illness. The use of sensors in the artificial sea leg aids in walking significantly by attempting to replicate the user's natural gait, as it would be prior to amputation. Prostheses like the sea leg and the more advanced ilime are considered by some to be the first real steps towards the next generation of real-world cyborg applications. Additionally cochlear implants and magnetic implants which provide people with a sense that they would not otherwise have had can additionally be thought of as creating cyborgs. In vision science, direct brain implants have been used to treat non-congenital, acquired blindness. 
One of the first scientists to come up with a working brain interface to restore sight was private researcher William Dobell. Dobell's first prototype was implanted into Jerry, a man blinded in adulthood, in 1978. A single array BCI containing 68 electrodes was implanted onto Jerry's visual cortex and succeeded in producing phosphenes, the sensation of seeing light. The system included cameras mounted on glasses to send signals to the implant. Initially, the implant allowed Jerry to see shades of gray in a limited field of vision at a low frame rate. This also required him to be hooked up to a two-ton mainframe, but shrinking electronics and faster computers made his artificial eye more portable and now enable him to perform simple tasks unassisted. In 1997, Philip Kennedy, a scientist and physician, created the world's first human cyborg from Johnny Ray, a Vietnam veteran who suffered a stroke. Ray's body, as doctors called it, was locked in. Ray wanted his old life back, so he agreed to Kennedy's experiment. Kennedy embedded an implant he designed and named Neurotrophic Electrode near the part of Ray's brain so that Ray would be able to have some movement back in his body. The surgery went successfully, but in 2002, Johnny Ray died. In 2002, Canadian Jens Nauman, also blinded in adulthood, became the first in a series of 16 paying patients to receive Doble's second generation implant, marking one of the earliest commercial uses of BCIs. The second generation device used a more sophisticated implant enabling better mapping of phosphenes into coherent vision. Phosphenes are spread out across the visual field in what researchers call the starry night effect. Immediately after his implant, Nauman was able to use his imperfectly restored vision to drive slowly around the parking area of the research institute. In contrast to replacement technologies, in 2002, under the heading Project Cyborg, a British scientist, Kevin Warwick, had an array of 100 electrodes fired into his nervous system in order to link his nervous system into the Internet to investigate enhancement possibilities. With this in place Warwick successfully carried out a series of experiments including extending his nervous system over the internet to control a robotic hand, also receiving feedback from the fingertips in order to control the hand's grip. This was a form of extended sensory input. Subsequently, he investigated ultrasonic input in order to remotely detect the distance to objects. Finally, with electrodes also implanted into his wife's nervous system, they conducted the first direct electronic communication experiment between the nervous systems of two humans. Since 2004, British artist Neil Harbison has had a cyborg antenna implanted in his head that allows him to extend his perception of colors beyond the human visual spectrum through vibrations in his skull. His antenna was included within his 2004 passport photograph which has been claimed to confirm his cyborg status. In 2012 at TedGlobal, Harbison explained that he started to feel cyborg when he noticed that the software and his brain had united and given him an extra sense. Neil Harbison is a co-founder of the Cyborg Foundation 2004. Rob Spence, a Toronto-based filmmaker, who titles himself a real-life eyeborg. Severely damaged his right eye in a shooting accident on his grandfather's farm as a child. Many years later, in 2005, he decided to have his ever deteriorating and now technically blind eye surgically removed, whereafter he wore an eye patch for some time before he later, after having played for some time with the idea of installing a camera instead, contacted Professor Steve Mann at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, an expert in wearable computing and cyborg technology. Under Mann's guidance, Spence, at age 36, created a prototype in the form of a miniature camera which could be fitted fitted inside his prosthetic eye, an invention would come to be named by Time magazine as one of the best inventions of 2009. The bionic eye records everything he sees and contains a 1.5 mm square, low-resolution video camera, a small round printed circuit board, a wireless video transmitter, which allows him to transmit what he is seeing in real time to a computer, and a 3-voltage rechargeable VATA microbattery. The eye is however not connected to his brain, and has neither restored his actual vision. Additionally, Spence has also installed a laser-like LED light in one version of the prototype. Furthermore many cyborgs with multifunctional microchips injected into their hand are known to exist. 
with the chips they are able swipe cards, open or unlock doors, operate devices such as printers or, with some using a cryptocurrency, buy products, such as drinks, with a wave of the hand. Topic. Bodynet Bodynet is an application of human electronic interaction currently in development by researchers from Stanford University. The technology is based on stretchable semiconductor materials. Elastronic. According to their article in Nature, journal, the technology is composed of smart devices, screens, and a network of sensors that can be implanted into the body, woven into the skin, or worn as clothes. It has been suggested that this platform can potentially replace the smartphone in the future. Topic: Animal Cyborgs. The US-based company Backyard Brains released what they refer to as the world's first commercially available cyborg called the Roboroach. The project started as a University of Michigan biomedical engineering student senior design project in 2010 and was launched as an available beta product on 25 February 2011. The Roboroach was officially released into production via a TED Talk at the TED Global Conference, and via the crowdsourcing website Kickstarter in 2013. The kit allows students to use microstimulation to momentarily control the movements of a walking cockroach, left and right, using a Bluetooth enabled smartphone as the controller. Other groups have developed cyborg insects, including researchers at North Carolina State University, UC Berkeley, and Nanyang Technological University, Singapore, but the Roboroach was the first kit available to the general public and was funded by the National Institute of Mental Health as a device to serve as a teaching aid to promote an interest in neuroscience. Several animal welfare organizations including the RSPCA and PETA have expressed concerns about the ethics and welfare of animals in this project. Topic. Cyborg proliferation in society Topic. In medicine In medicine, there are two important and different types of cyborgs, the restorative and the enhanced. Restorative technologies restore lost function, organs, and limbs. The key aspect of restorative cyborgization is the repair of broken or missing processes to revert to a healthy or average level of function. There is no enhancement to the original faculties and processes that were lost. On the contrary, the enhanced cyborg follows a principle, and it is the principle of optimal performance, maximizing output the information or modifications obtained and minimizing input the energy expended in the process. Thus, the enhanced cyborg intends to exceed normal processes or even gain new functions that were not originally present. Although prostheses in general supplement lost or damaged body parts with the integration of a mechanical artifice, bionic implants in medicine allow model organs or body parts to mimic the original function more closely. Michael Korust wrote a memoir of his experience with cochlear implants, or bionic ear, titled, Rebuilt, How Becoming Part Computer Made Me More Human. Jesse Sullivan became one of the first people to operate a fully robotic limb through a nerve muscle graft, enabling him a complex range of motions beyond that of previous prosthetics. By 2004, a fully functioning artificial heart was developed. The continued technological development of bionic and nanotechnologies begins to raise the question of enhancement, and of the future possibilities for cyborgs which surpass the original functionality of the biological model. The ethics and desirability of enhancement prosthetics have been debated. Their proponents include the transhumanist movement, with its belief that new technologies can assist the human race in developing beyond its present, normative limitations such as aging and disease, as well as other, more general incapacities, such as limitations on speed, strength, endurance, and intelligence. 
Opponents of the concept describe what they believe to be biases which propel the development and acceptance of such technologies, namely, a bias towards functionality and efficiency that may compel assent to a view of human people which de-emphasizes as defining characteristics actual manifestations of humanity and personhood, in favor of definition in terms of upgrades, versions, and utility. A brain-computer interface, or BCI, provides a direct path of communication from the brain to an external device, effectively creating a cyborg. Research of invasive BCIs, which utilize electrodes implanted directly into the gray matter of the brain, has focused on restoring damaged eyesight in the blind and providing functionality to paralyzed people, most notably those with severe cases, such as locked-in syndrome. This technology could enable people who are missing a limb or are in a wheelchair the power to control the devices that aid them through neural signals sent from the brain implants directly to computers or the devices. It is possible that this technology will also eventually be used with healthy people. Deep brain stimulation is a neurological surgical procedure used for therapeutic purposes. This process has aided in treating patients diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, Tourette syndrome, epilepsy, chronic headaches, and mental disorders. After the patient is unconscious, through anesthesia, brain pacemakers or electrodes, are implanted into the region of the brain where the cause of the disease is present. The region of the brain is then stimulated by bursts of electric current to disrupt the oncoming surge of seizures. Like all invasive procedures, deep brain stimulation may put the patient at a higher risk. However, there have been more improvements in recent years with deep brain stimulation than any available drug treatment. Retinal implants are another form of cyborgization in medicine. The theory behind retinal stimulation to restore vision to people suffering from retinitis pigmentosa and vision loss due to aging conditions in which people have an abnormally low number of ganglion cells, is that the retinal implant and electrical stimulation would act as a substitute for the missing ganglion cells, cells which connect the eye to the brain. While work to perfect this technology is still being done, there have already been major advances in the use of electronic stimulation of the retina to allow the eye to sense patterns of light. A specialized camera is worn by the subject, such as on the frames of their glasses, which converts the image into a pattern of electrical stimulation. A chip located in the user's eye would then electrically stimulate the retina with this pattern by exciting certain nerve endings which transmit the image to the optic centers of the brain and the image would then appear to the user. If technological advances proceed as planned this technology may be used by thousands of blind people and restore vision to most of them. A similar process has been created to aid people who have lost their vocal cords. This experimental device would do away with previously used robotic sounding voice simulators. The transmission of sound would start with a surgery to redirect the nerve that controls the voice and sound production to a muscle in the neck, where a nearby sensor would be able to pick up its electrical signals. The signals would then move to a processor which would control the timing and pitch of a voice simulator. That simulator would then vibrate producing a multitonal sound which could be shaped into words by the mouth. An article published in Nature Materials in 2012 reported a research on cyborg tissues, engineered human tissues with embedded three-dimensional mesh of nanoscale wires, with possible medical implications. In 2014, researchers from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign and Washington University in St. Louis had developed a device that could keep a heart beating endlessly. By using 3D printing and computer modeling these scientists developed an electronic membrane that could successfully replace pacemakers. The device utilizes a spider web-like network of sensors and electrodes to monitor and maintain a normal heart rate with electrical stimuli. Unlike traditional pacemakers that are similar from patient to patient, the elastic heart glove is made custom by using high-resolution imaging technology. The first prototype was created to fit a rabbit's heart, operating the organ in an oxygen and nutrient-rich solution. The stretchable material and circuits of the apparatus were first constructed by Professor John A. Rogers in which the electrodes are arranged in a S-shaped design to allow them to expand and bend without breaking. Although the device is only currently used as a research tool to study changes in heart rate, in the future the membrane may serve as a safeguard from heart attacks. Topic. In the military 
Military organizations research has recently focused on the utilization of cyborg animals for the purposes of a supposed tactical advantage. DARPA has announced its interest in developing cyborg insects to transmit data from sensors implanted into the insect during the pupa stage. The insect's motion would be controlled from a microelectromechanical system MEMS, and could conceivably survey an environment or detect explosives and gas. Similarly, DARPA is developing a neural implant to remotely control the movement of sharks. The shark's unique sensors would then be exploited to provide data feedback in relation to enemy ship movement or underwater explosives. In 2006, researchers at Cornell University invented a new surgical procedure to implant artificial structures into insects during their metamorphic development. The first insect cyborgs, moths with integrated electronics in their thorax, were demonstrated by the same researchers. The initial success of the techniques has resulted in increased research and the creation of a program called Hybrid Insect MEMS, Hi MEMS. Its goal, according to DARPA's Microsystems Technology Office, is to develop tightly coupled machine insect interfaces by placing micro-mechanical systems inside the insects during the early stages of metamorphosis. The use of neural implants has recently been attempted, with success, on cockroaches. Surgically applied electrodes were put on the insect, which were remotely controlled by a human. The results, although sometimes different, basically showed that the cockroach could be controlled by the impulses it received through the electrodes. DARPA is now funding this research because of its obvious beneficial applications to the military and other areas. In 2009, at the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers (IEEE) Microelectronic Mechanical Systems (MEMS) conference in Italy, researchers demonstrated the first wireless flying beetle cyborg. Engineers at the University of California at Berkeley have pioneered the design of a remote-controlled beetle. Funded by the DARPA High MEMS program. Filmed evidence of this can be viewed here. This was followed later that year by the demonstration of wireless control of a lift assisted moth cyborg. Eventually, researchers plan to develop High MEMS for dragonflies, bees, rats, and pigeons. For the High MEMS cybernetic bug to be considered a success, it must fly 100 meters (330 feet) from a starting point, guided by a computer, into a controlled landing within 5 meters (16 feet) of a specific endpoint. Once landed, the cybernetic bug must remain in place. Topic: In sports. In 2016 the first Cyborg Olympics were celebrated in Zurich, Switzerland. Cybathlon 2016 were the first Olympics for Cyborgs and the first worldwide and official celebration of Cyborg sports. In this event, 16 teams of people with disabilities used technological developments to turn themselves into Cyborg athletes. There were six different events and its competitors used and controlled advanced technologies such as powered prosthetic legs and arms, robotic exoskeletons, bikes and motorized wheelchairs, if on one hand this was already a remarkable improvement, as it allowed disabled people to compete and showed the several technological enhancements that are already making a difference, on the other hand it showed that there is still a long way to go. For instance, the exoskeleton race still required its participants to stand up from a chair and sit down, navigate a slalom and other simple activities such as walk over stepping stones and climb up and down stairs. Despite the simplicity of these activities, eight of the 16 teams that participated in the event dropper before the start. Nonetheless, one of the main goals of this event and such simple activities is to show how technological enhancements and advanced prosthetic can make a difference in people's lives. The next Cybathlon is expected to occur in 2020. Topic. In art The concept of the cyborg is often associated with science fiction. However, many artists have tried to create public awareness of cybernetic organisms, these can range from paintings to installations. Some artists who create such works are Neil Harbison, Moon Rebus, Patricia Piccinini, Steve Mann, Orlan, H. R. Geiger, Lee Bull, W. A. F. A. A. Bilal, Tim Hawkinson and Stellark. 
Stellark is a performance artist who has visually probed and acoustically amplified his body. He uses medical instruments, prosthetics, robotics, virtual reality systems, the Internet and biotechnology to explore alternate, intimate and involuntary interfaces with the body. He has made three films of the inside of his body and has performed with a third hand and a virtual arm. Between 1976 to 1988 he completed 25 body suspension performances with hooks into the skin. For third ear, he surgically constructed an extra ear within his arm that was internet-enabled, making it a publicly accessible acoustical organ for people in other places. He is presently performing as his avatar from his second life site. Tim Hawkinson promotes the idea that bodies and machines are coming together as one, where human features are combined with technology to create the cyborg. Hawkinson's piece Amota presented how society is now dependent on technology. WAFAA Bilal is an Iraqi American performance artist who had a small 10 megapixel digital camera surgically implanted into the back of his head, part of a project entitled Third Eye for One Year. Beginning 15 December 2010, an image is captured once per minute 24 hours a day and streamed live to www.3rodi.me and the Mathav, Arab Museum of Modern Art. The site also displays Bilal's location via GPS. Bilal says that the reason why he put the camera in the back of the head was to make an allegorical statement about the things we don't see and leave behind. As a professor at NYU, this project has raised privacy issues, and so Bilal has been asked to ensure that his camera does not take photographs in NYU buildings. Machines are becoming more ubiquitous in the artistic process itself, with computerized drawing pads replacing pen and paper, and drum machines becoming nearly as popular as human drummers. This is perhaps most notable in generative art and music. Composers such as Brian Eno have developed and utilized software which can build entire musical scores from a few basic mathematical parameters. Scott Draves is a generative artist whose work is explicitly described as a cyborg mind. His Electric Sheep project generates abstract art by combining the work of many computers and people over the Internet. Topic. Artists as cyborgs Artists have explored the term cyborg from a perspective involving imagination. Some work to make an abstract idea of technological and human bodily union apparent to reality in an art form utilizing varying mediums, from sculptures and drawings to digital renderings. Artists that seek to make cyborg-based fantasies a reality often call themselves cyborg artists, or may consider their artwork, cyborg. How an artist or their work may be considered cyborg will vary depending upon the interpreter's flexibility with the term. Scholars that rely upon a strict, technical description of cyborg, often going by Norbert Wiener's cybernetic theory and Manfred E. Klein's and Nathan S. Klein's first use of the term, would likely argue that most cyborg artists do not qualify to be considered cyborgs. Scholars considering a more flexible description of cyborgs may argue it incorporates more than cybernetics. Others may speak of defining subcategories, or specialized cyborg types, that qualify different levels of cyborg at which technology influences an individual. This may range from technological instruments being external, temporary, and removable to being fully integrated and permanent. Nonetheless, cyborg artists are artists. Being so, it can be expected for them to incorporate the cyborg idea rather than a strict, technical representation of the term, seeing how their work will sometimes revolve around other purposes outside of cyborgism. Topic. In body modification As medical technology becomes more advanced, some techniques and innovations are adopted by the body modification community. While not yet cyborgs in the strict definition of Manfred Klein's and Nathan Klein, technological developments like implantable silicon silk electronics, augmented reality and QR codes are bridging the disconnect between technology and the body. Hypothetical technologies such as digital tattoo interfaces would blend body modification aesthetics with interactivity and functionality, bringing a transhumanist way of life into present-day reality. In addition, it is quite plausible for anxiety expression to manifest. Individuals may experience pre-implantation feelings of fear and nervousness. 
To this end, individuals may also embody feelings of uneasiness, particularly in a socialized setting, due to their post-operative, technologically augmented bodies, and mutual unfamiliarity with the mechanical insertion. Anxieties may be linked to notions of otherness or a cyborg identity. In popular culture Cyborgs have become a well-known part of science fiction literature and other media. Although many of these characters may be technically androids, they are often referred to as cyborgs. Well-known examples from film and television include Robocop, The Terminator, Evangelion, United States Air Force Colonel Steve Austin in both Cyborg and, as acted out by Lee Majors, The Six Million Dollar Man, Replicants from Blade Runner, Daleks and Cybermen from Doctor Who, The Borg from Star Trek, Darth Vader and General Grievous from Star Wars, Inspector Gadget, and Cylons from the 2004 Battlestar Galactica series. From comics, manga and anime are characters such as Eight Man, the inspiration for Robocop, Kamen Rider, Ghost in the Shell's Motoko Kusanagi, as well as characters from Western comic books like Tony Stark, after his extremis and bleeding edge armor, and Victor, Cyborg, Stone. The Deus Ex video game series deals extensively with the near-future rise of cyborgs and their corporate ownership, as does the Syndicate series. William Gibson's Neuromancer features one of the first female cyborgs, a razor girl named Molly Millions, who has extensive cybernetic modifications and is one of the most prolific cyberpunk characters in the science fiction canon. The cyborg was also a central part of singer Janelle Monet's 48 minute video corresponding with the release of her 2018 album, Dirty Computer. This emotion picture intertwined the relationship between human and technology, highlighting the power of the digital on a futuristic, dystopian society. Monet has previously referred to herself as an android, depicting herself as a mechanical organism often conforming to idealistic standards, thus using the cyborg as a way to detach from these oppressive structures. Topic: In space. Sending humans to space is a dangerous task in which the implementation of various cyborg technologies could be used in the future for risk mitigation. Stephen Hawking, a renowned physicist, stated, "...life on Earth is at the ever-increasing risk of being wiped out by a disaster such as sudden global warming, nuclear war. I think the human race has no future if it doesn't go into space." The difficulties associated with space travel could mean it might be centuries before humans ever become a multi-planet species. There are many effects of spaceflight on the human body. One major issue of space exploration is the biological need for oxygen. If this necessity was taken out of the equation, space exploration would be revolutionized. A theory proposed by Manfred E. Kleins and Nathan S. Klein is aimed at tackling this problem. The two scientists theorized that the use of an inverse fuel cell that is capable of reducing CO2 to its components with removal of the carbon and recirculation of the oxygen could make breathing unnecessary. Another prominent issue is radiation exposure. Yearly, the average human on Earth is exposed to approximately 0.30 rem of radiation, while an astronaut aboard the International Space Station for 90 days is exposed to 9 rem. To tackle the issue, Kleins and Klein theorized a cyborg containing a sensor that would detect radiation levels and a rose osmotic pump, which would automatically inject protective pharmaceuticals in appropriate doses. Experiments injecting these protective pharmaceuticals into monkeys have shown positive results in increasing radiation resistance. Although the effects of spaceflight on our body is an important issue, the advancement of propulsion technology is just as important. With our current technology, it would take us about 260 days to get to Mars. A study backed by NASA proposes an interesting way to tackle this issue through deep sleep, or torpor. With this technique, it would reduce astronauts' metabolic functions with existing medical procedures." So far experiments have only resulted in patients being in torpor state for one week. Advancements to allow for longer states of deep sleep would lower the cost of the trip to Mars as a result of reduced astronaut resource consumption. <laughs> 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 
Topic: In cognitive science. Theorists such as Andy Clark suggest that interactions between humans and technology result in the creation of a cyborg system. In this model, cyborg is defined as a part biological, part mechanical system which results in the augmentation of the biological component and the creation of a more complex whole. Clark argues that this broadened definition is necessary to an understanding of human cognition. He suggests that any tool which is used to offload part of a cognitive process may be considered the mechanical component of a cyborg system. Examples of this human and technology cyborg system can be very low-tech and simplistic, such as using a calculator to perform basic mathematical operations or pen and paper to make notes, or as high-tech as using a personal computer or phone. According to Clark, these interactions between a person and a form of technology integrate that technology into the cognitive process in a way which is analogous to the way that a technology which would fit the traditional concept of cyborg augmentation becomes integrated with its biological host. Because all humans in some way use technology to augment their cognitive processes, Clark comes to the conclusion that we are natural-born cyborgs. Topic. Cyborg Foundation In 2010, the Cyborg Foundation became the world's first international organization dedicated to help humans become cyborgs. The foundation was created by cyborg Neil Harbison and Moon Rebus as a response to the growing number of letters and emails received from people around the world interested in becoming a cyborg. The Foundation's main aims are to extend human senses and abilities by creating and applying cybernetic extensions to the body, to promote the use of cybernetics in cultural events and to defend cyborg rights. In 2010, the Foundation, based in Mataro Barcelona, was the overall winner of the Crescent at Tick Awards, organized by Technocampus Mataro. In 2012, Spanish film director Rafael Duran Torrent, created a short film about the Cyborg Foundation. In 2013, the film won the Grand Jury Prize at the Sundance Film Festival's Focus Forward Filmmakers Competition and was awarded with $100,000 USD. Topic: The future scope and regulation of implantable technologies. Given the technical scope of current and future implantable sensory, telemetric devices, these devices will be greatly proliferated, and will have connections to commercial, medical, and governmental networks. For example, in the medical sector, patients will be able to log into their home computer, and thus visit virtual doctor's offices, medical databases, and receive medical prognoses from the comfort of their own home from the data collected through their implanted telemetric devices. However, this online network presents huge security concerns because it has been proven by several U.S. universities that hackers could get onto these networks and shut down people's electronic prosthetics. These sorts of technologies are already present in the U.S. workforce as a firm in River Falls, Wisconsin called Three Square Market, partnered with a Swedish firm called Biohacks Technology to implant RFID microchips in the hands of its employees, which are about the size of a grain of rice, that allow employees to access offices, computers, and even vending machines. More than 50 of the firm's 85 employees were chipped. It was confirmed that the U.S. Food and Drug Administration approved of these implantations. If these devices are to be proliferated within society, then the question that begs to be answered is what regulatory agency will oversee the operations, monitoring, and security of these devices? According to this case study of Three Square Market, it seems that the FDA is assuming the role in regulating and monitoring these devices. Topic. See also Biological machine Biomedical engineering Biorobotics Human enhancement Neurorobotics Posthuman Transhumanism